Howdy, I'm Nancy L.T. Hamilton and you are in my studio. Welcome. Today we are going to be doing torch fire and enamel and this technique was developed by a woman named Barbara Lewis. She put out this book, Torch Fire and Enamel Jewelry, which was the first one I read and I started experimenting with this technique based on her, her processes. Um, I'm not going to say much. I'm going to talk while I work so that we can make this a rapidly filmed video, not a three hour one like it probably could be. So let's get started. Over, over here, you will see some of the tools that you will need for this process. You'll want to have a tripod. The other thing that you really need to have, and this makes a big, big difference in the the um, success of your enamel is a crock pot. As you can see, I paid eight for mine at a used stuff store. And this is filled with vermiculite. You could also use clay cat litter. Speaking of cats, <laughs> these are cat food cans that I put vermiculite in and I keep them in here. And when I'm enameling, I put my little pieces in there because digging through that whole crock pot full of vermiculite makes me crazy looking for little tiny bead caps and wires and stuff like that. So I use these and I'll, we'll show the process as we go along. You will need ventilation, which is right over there. Some kind of torch, you can get a hothead torch. I'll have a link for that. I am going to be using acetylene, which is a pretty dirty gas, but it's not gonna make that big of a difference. Um, you can use a butane torch like this. And you can also use a creme brulee torch, but if you're going to use a creme brulee torch, you need to know that you may not be able to do the largest pieces. Um, you have to get these things pretty hot and the creme brulee torch may not have the strength to completely heat up a big pattern, leaf, petal, whatever it's called. This is a, just a block with some seriously strong magnets, two on each side, and it sticks to my metal turntable. You could stick this to a steel block. The only purpose behind it is to keep this on here when we're pulling our beads. So I could use anything that was made of steel to stick it onto. And these bread pans, I got four oh, for a reasonable price. I'll also have a link for those. And I just saw it in these in there. Uh, and you'll see as we work how this, how this functions with the process. And then mandrels, I have a ton of them. Mandrels are really inexpensive online. Lots of Etsy stores have them. And I like to use cross locks. And also, which aren't here, unfortunately, uh, a pair of pliers with serrated jaws so that you can crunch that enamel off and or a, a funky hammer that you can hammer it off the mandrels because it, it does build up on here. So that's our tool list briefly. Uh, there's probably something I'm missing, but you know how it is. So as far as holding your torch stationary, which hopefully we'll cut down on dangerous incidents, um, no matter what torch you're using, this would be, the map gas would be used with the hothead torch. You can use the large butane like this, even your creme brulee, and even an acetylene or an oxygen propane or an oxygen acetylene torch can be mounted to your, to your soldering area. I get L brackets and smash them down and just pound it with a mallet until it relaxes like that. And what this, why we do that is because this gives it an angle to hang at. So the only other things you need are a C clamp and differently sized um, pipe hose clamps. The deal is, is that this, so like when I mount my pro, but, uh, acetylene, I put the, um, a much smaller hose clamp around this and tighten it down around this piece so that the torch is actually tightly held by the bracket here. And then 
Oh, come on. Everybody stop. You're all irritating. And then once that's held down, then you just seat clamp it to your bench and your torch is held for you. Uh, it works the same way with the butane and the propane. You just have to adjust the size of the clamp, hose clamp that you use. If you notice my hands, there are some the burn recoveries going on there. Um, I find that when I'm hand holding the torch, as opposed to mounting the torch center in front of me to my actual bench, um, that it's dangerous. Uh, you forget that you have the torch in your hand and like I did twice, ran my hand through the acetylene torch. Not a pleasant thing, believe me. So these little metal containers are craft tins, I guess, that people make candles with them or put creams in. Uh, it's two and a half inches diameter. They also come in square with a window. The thing about enamel is it isn't always necessarily true that the color of the enamel is the color of the fired enamel. So I make these little squares so that I can see what color they are. You want a metal container because you're going to be dipping hot metal into the container. If you use plastic, these get pretty hot sometimes, so you could actually melt your pl melt plastic. So try to stick with metal. And um, I buy two ounces at a time minimum because you need enough enamel to be able to drag your these pieces through through it and. Um, if you only have an ounce, it just makes it a little more difficult. So they do sell them in sample kits with multiple, I think they're half ounce or one ounce sizes. Then there's two ounce and then there's eight ounce. Uh, the eight ounce gets really pricey as you move down it, depend, especially depending on what's in, what kind of minerals are inside that create the color. It can be price expensive. So um, anyway, let's shut up and get on with some fire stuff. I do that I wanted to talk briefly about the stages of enamel this is called sugar coat or sugar at sugar stage and this is not fired all the way the enamel is stuck to this it just hasn't fully relaxed fused onto the metal yet uh, it can be used for all these can be used as a decorative um, element if you so desire you don't have to do full shiny this is orange peel and once again it's getting closer to fully fired but it's not fired yet it's starting to develop its shine it's getting smoother this is fired smooth evenly coated and then we have over fired here and it pulls up from the edges in severe cases you can boil it and there'll be bare spots uh, on the metal so that also can be used as a design element but right now we're going to work on doing just the full fuse on here. On the wire, you'll want 14, 16 or 18 gauge. This is 16 that I'm using here and it's, um, I don't know, eight to 10, eight to 10 centimeters long. You can make it shorter. It really doesn't need to be this long. I just like to make extra. Oh, guess where that went. Okay, so what we want for our head pin is our wire and some cross locks. And we're going to be holding it like this, keeping it away from our delicate little fingers. I did want to mention that if you are pouring your enamels or any kind, anytime you're sifting or pouring enamel, you want to be wearing a mask because um, this stuff is awful. It, it can ruin your lungs. Same with the uh, vermiculite. I think they all have silica in them and that's your lungs don't like it so all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to light our torch Actually, it, it turn on my fan and what i'm going to do is i'm going to heat this up the, no, you can't really see it right here there's a blue cone that ends right about here And that blue cone is where 
the heat is. So I'm putting that blue cone about three millimeters, two millimeters up from the end of my wire and heating my wire until it balls up. Keep this over your bench because these balls can drop off. They get real hot and drop. Okay, now I'm going to wait one, two, three, dip, tap off the excess. I'm going to heat above the ball until the ball glows red. What this does is it keeps the um, the soot from the torch, the carbon from the torch, from marring the color, especially on the light colors. Okay. When it gets red again, I'm going to dip it again, tap it off. Red dip. I usually do four to five coats with a head pin. Okay, one more. Okay, this will be my last one. So this one I want to heat the most because I want the enamel to fully fuse. So I want to see it glow pretty good in red there. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to place that there and then I'm going to immediately, as soon as I get my torch off, put it into my crock pot in one of my kitty food cans and let it cool in there. Uh, actually, it's not going to cool. It's going to drop in temperature, but the crock pot is going to hold it hot for quite a while. And then when I'm done, let's say 15, 20 minutes later, I'm going to take out my kitty food can and let this cool to room temperature um, so that the, the temperature slowly rises over time and we don't have a sudden shock to the glass. So when I'm done with that color, I just close it up and put it away because it's easy to get other colors mixed in here or soot uh, off of the metal. All right, what I want to, I'm going to do now is my little tiny center flower, and I want to find the mandrel that fits this close, as close as possible to the whole size. That way it gives you more control. Now, the cool thing about steel wire is you can hold this in your hands while you're heating it several times, and it won't get hot down at this end. It will be hot at this end, though, so... You may want to have a jar here with water in it to drop your hot mandrels into. I just always put mine down in the same direction so I know that the cool end is facing towards me. But if this was copper wire, you first fire, you would be burnt. So steel's cool that way. Okay, we're going to use a little Delft blue for our center flower. All right, here we go. So I'm going to heat from the back because the torch makes the enamel dirty so I, the parts that I don't care about are always heated from the back that's where the torch goes so dip tap see the enamels on the inside so you want to make sure you kind of dig it into the enamel so you get it way in on these curved shapes continue to heat on back until it glows put this back in the enamel tap off the excess see now it's kind of stuck on the mandrel it actually fused enamel to the mandrel. Dip, that's three. Now you can do three, or you can do four, or you can do five. If you're doing filigree, you don't want to do too many coats because you'll fill in your filigree. All right, so now I'm going to heat this up until I see it go completely smooth. And I wait a second and then run it through there and pull it off. And sometimes it sticks here, but don't worry, it's not permanently stuck on there. That we need to, of course, get into crock pot right away. For my next shape, which is this one, I'm going to use this orchid. But before then, I want to check my mandrel. Um, if I have a lot of enamel built up on here, I can take the hammer and hammer it that often takes it off. If that doesn't work, you take your serrated pliers. And you might want to cover that so you don't get this into here. And then squeeze and twist this to snap off any enamel. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't come off until you get a buildup on it. 
watch the little flakes from this. Talk about injury, see that there? That was my doctor operating on my finger to get a piece of enamel out of it. It was a bad week, let me just put it that way. Okay, so we're gonna do our color. Okay, torch. Now, what you're not seeing is that I'm putting this right at the tip of the blue flame on my torch. See how heated that is? Woo. This one, because it's so deep, I really need to dig it around in there and didn't get all the way in, so I'm gonna have to work hard at this, trying to get this filled. This is why you want a lot of powder. I'm gonna switch mandrels. That one's too, too close to the size of the hole. All right. Also, be careful when you dip these in that you can really easily bend the thinner uh, metal. That's why I like 20 gauge copper. It's not as easy to bend when it's this soft. All right, now I'm going for full fuse here. You don't have to go to full fuse between coats. But you do when you're done, when your last fires. There we go. That didn't stick at all, so that was cool. Okay, and into the crock pot we go. Um, I want to mention you can use some brasses. Uh, the enamel does not like zinc, so brass has zinc in it. So what you need to do is find a brass that's I think it's 15% or less zinc in it. Rich low brass. I'll put a link up for um, the type of brass that will work. And I think Gilder's metal will work. Once again, we're gonna pull the torch out. This time though, I'm using cross locks. I'm going to heat the bottom half of this piece. Get it hot down here, like center, from the center down. And I'm going to dunk it in, trying to keep my uh, cross locks far from the enamel. Dunk, dip, try to swirl it around. It's going to be three coats down here. And then I move around, pedal my pedal essentially, filling in bare spots. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this down, turn off my torch. Get another pair of cross locks and I'm going to hold it from a different spot. Always keeping the back towards me. That way I can dip other pebble, pe petals. And I want to just keep walking around this, dipping as I go so that I cover the whole piece. Now, if if this, if your piece is even too big for this, I'll show you in a second what you can do. And on this thicker, larger pieces, you might have to heat it longer, so you might want to check the other side to make sure that you've actually reached full fusion. I'm consuming with these bigger pieces. And these are the ones that I worry that the creme brulee torch will not be sufficient. This is an acetylene torch and it's really hot and it's still I'm having to move my torch around a lot. Okay, so we're going to cool that, turn this off. You can take, if you get this multi bread pan set, what you can do is take um, some of the other bread pans and fill them with enamel and you can use these to drag in or other larger metal container, but you're going to need more enamel to do that. So now I'm holding an area that has enamel on it, so I really want to keep the heat away from here, otherwise it's going to stick to my cross locks. So I want to definitely keep it down at this end. If you're working with a color for a long time, ow, these containers get really hot, so really be careful about that. So I just did a video on wire working, and in that we made some um, spirals and shapes like this. This can, these can also be enameled and I use them 
as tendrils or as actually as hanging mechanisms for some of these pieces so I don't have to rely on using uh, my head pin as a method of hanging. The head pin, what you usually do is make a loop back here and sometimes it just doesn't lay right. But you can, during the fusing process, fuse something like this onto the piece so that this just becomes your hanger here. Uh, I just started doing that and it seems to work really well. So I'm going to show you how to do these also. All right, now we're going to enamel some curls and swirls. The larger, longer pieces with a thicker gauge are easier. The whole goal is to get this immersed in enamel without the cross locks getting stuck to it. That's our mission. So I'm going to use the butane. I'm going to heat about the top two thirds. And then I'm going to dip. The hard part is getting the dipping done in this area here. It might be easier with like a bread pan dip as opposed to a jar dip. Two. Now mind you, this metal and when you get start getting the um, enamel on the metal, the enamel actually moves the metal while you're holding it. So I had one jump out of a, a cross locks. So be careful. Make sure you keep your work over your soldering area. All right. So now I'm switching ends, but I'm keeping the dirty side towards me again. two-thirds in the base. I don't want to put heat up where the cross locks are. And you'll notice, see how this got wonky? I'll show you how to fix that when we're done. Okay, so while it's still hot, you can take the piece and put it on something to straighten it out, but it has to be red hot to, to straighten. And the joy is trying to dip this without bending it like I just did again. So once again, I have to heat this to really hot and then straighten it on something. If you don't heat it before you straighten it, it'll crack your enamel. Fuse, and then I'm going to check that my other end is fully fused. Might even throw another coat on that side. Or two. I want a pretty loop after all. Alright, full fuse. And there's our piece. So hopefully it comes off the cross locks. Yes, it does. So there we go. Let's see. Let's see how it's kind of discolored along the edges. It's not perfect. Um, once again, in a kiln, this would not have this issue with the soot. But we're doing torch enameling. So that's loop swirls and la di -dahs. One of the ways to fuse pieces together is to do it on a tripod over that hole we had in our screen and heat from below. I have a different way that I do it. I'll, I'll use this if I can't figure out a way to do it the other the way I'm going to show you. Um, but this is another option. This is a trivet here. It's, and you want one that's open so that the torch flame can get up and around the piece. And then you want to be able to get your wire in there. Um, the reason for the trivet is it has a minimal amount of metal that's touching the enamel. Because remember when the enamel gets, when it gets really hot, it gets soft and it will fuse to anything. So you try to 
have it so that the enamel it has the least amount of touching possible with it, which is why I like my fusing method since there's no metal touching it. So. All the best laid plans of enamelists and jewelers often go astray. As you can see, my hole has filled in here and I need to re-drill this. So a diamond drill bit works great in a flex shaft or Dremel. I immerse this in a uh, lid uh, filled with water, keep the dust down and to cool the bit so that it doesn't overheat and get wrecked. So I'm going to go do that, drill this out again. Uh, notice the color difference. Look at that. It's like muck and yellow. And I've got some of it on the sides here unavoidable. I'm going to call that part of a natural looking flower because <laughs> I don't care right now. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'll be back and then we'll do the fusing after I fix this. All right, so what I want to do is gather my parts and I want to start with my head pin and my little tiny guy. And I'm going to insert the head pin inside of the small part. Anything that doesn't fit through, you redrill with your diamond core drill. Now I'm going to clip this to my um, cross locks and suspend it like that. Let's make it so you can see it a little better. You want to have it straight up and down so that it fuses level and we're going to fuse these in layers I just hope you can see this little tiny thing and I'm going to fuse from the top down you want to be careful to not aim the blue tip at the wire you want to go around because the wire can melt and you want to heat this up pretty dang hot. It should be glowing. And that seems to be fused. It's not moving. So now what we need to do is put the next layer on, which is this. OK. Now we're going to fuse this the same way we just did the other one. Once again, keep the tip off the wire. Just heat up the enamel around it. And you're focusing on the center, not on the ends. You want to get it really hot, but you don't want to melt the metal and you don't want to melt the wire. Okay, so that looks good. It should glow. You can check it. it. Shouldn't move, but be careful it doesn't slide down the wire and hit your hand. Just be living in fear during this whole process because <laughs> it's you're working with extremely high temperatures. Okay, last fuse. Oh wait, I wanted to put the uh, loop on. Dang. So when you're doing this, I've got the yellow side and I've got the muck side. So when I put this in, I want the muck side facing up. So this is going to go on like that. You want to move the loop that you're going to use to hang in between the petals if you're going to hang it. If not, if you don't, it's going to end up, you won't be able to access it. So remember that when you're lining these all up. All right, let's hope this works because mama is done. And we're, we're, I probably should have fused the wire separately. Just thought of that. I forgot. So I would do the wire and then do the back plate because now I have to really, really heat this so that I fuse through the wire, the loop, and onto the third part. If that makes any sense whatsoever. By the way, if you're going to be doing a lot of this, you should be wearing IR protective glasses. Those are the green lenses. You're not getting as much UV as you are, as you are, you, I are. I don't know. We'll see. 
Let's see if that worked. If it didn't work, I'll take it off and um, do it separately. Okay, so there's the fuse piece, and this is going to go in back into the crock pot. Party down, little guy. One of, one of the tricks for making these um, flowers is to make sure that your pieces all fit into one another, stacking like this. And one of the ways you can do that is to use the same dapping punch for the center. I use this is a piece of urethane. You could use rubber. You could use stacked newspapers, or if you if it, the piece fits in here, you can just use your block. They should stack and and touch each other. So hopefully in the middle because it'll be important to do this for the fusing process down the road here. So I just wanted to share that with you. And I'm going to go find an intermediate shape that fits and one that has a hole so I don't have to do any extra work. So you also want to make sure that all your petals, everything is set the way you want it to look before you do the enameling. Because once you do the enameling, it's, it's possible to change it, but it's just such a pain in the butt. So make sure all your shapes fit and that everything is looking the way you want it to look. You also want to make sure that the holes that are in your pieces are all the same size so they can all accommodate the same piece of wire. So use the same drill bit because in, this is going to be a head pin that runs through. Or I can actually show you. See that one in there? It runs through, holds these shapes together during the uh, fusing process. So it's kind of important. Thought if I had to open this hole up a little bit, and these things are really dangerous to re drill because they're like razor blades on your flex shaft. So if I'm going to drill something like this, I want to make sure that my fingers are up on top of the pedals when I'm drilling, and preferably these are drilled out before you even saw them out. Um, but sometimes we get pieces like this already and we have to drill them. So just keep your fingers up here and a nice brand new sharp drill bit with lots of wax on it and go slowly. I don't want you to cut your fingers off. Well, here we are nearing the end of the video and I wanted to talk about hanging your beautiful enamel flowers or whatever you're making. Uh, obviously the ones that we fuse the swirls and curls in can be hung via these parts. Like this one here has a jump ring attached. This would just be hooked under your chain or actually this part right here could be hooked into your chain depending on the design. Um, that's the simplest method and it also guarantees that it hangs straight up and down like this. Other methods are to do loops on the back side you can create a double or a single loop on there. Um, one of the things you want to do is push your wire up like this and then do your loop as high as you can do it without it being visible from the other side. This helps to keep the center of gravity higher so that the piece doesn't have a tendency to flop like this. See how that kind of flops forward. Your chest, if you're wearing this as a necklace, will hold this out. So it's not a huge deal, but if these were earrings, that would hang funny. Or as opposed to hanging, let's say from this, where it's going to be more straight up and down. Um, so anyway, make your loop. With thicker wire, you can just do a single loop. If you need to, you can do a double loop with your wire. And after you after you're completed it, then go ahead and... and push it up against the wall and do your final adjusting on it. So I would probably sand and file this so that it's pretty. And then this will just hang like that. Um, those are your simplest methods. You easily could devise a method for mounting this with little tabs, maybe three minimum. Cold, use cold connections, screws, blah, 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 tabs whatever you just have to plan for them in advance 
before you make your piece. Otherwise, you'll get to the end and go, oh, like this one, how am I attaching this? You know, I don't want to do this. How do I, how do I figure that out? So um, hopefully you've already done that design work ahead of time. Anyway, these are some ideas for attaching things. And um, that's the end of the video. Thank you for joining me. This is Nancy LT Hamilton saying ciao.